Hey everyone! Uh, so yeah, it's official. I've reached 1,000 subscribers, which is a crazy feat in itself. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why you guys waste your time with me, but you know, I greatly appreciate it. So, to celebrate, I'm doing a Q&A, and I put a video about a week ago where you guys were allowed to put in your own questions. Uh, before we start, uh, the Makes No Sense series, I am planning to continue it. I'm thinking the next one will do uh, the Fast and the Furious. Uh, it's just, I have not had no time to do a ton of research with that kind of stuff. Plus, I'm not around my car that much. So, I wanted to film some stuff with my car. But, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Does your mom know you're gay? <laughs> oh, good grief, jeez. Alright, this first question, this is from JCC-2224. I actually watch him on YouTube. Uh, if you like Hot Wheels stuff, definitely go follow him. Uh, he's just a great YouTuber to follow. Congrats on 1K. My question is, what are the benefits and downsides of having a car like yours instead of something that is resto modded? Okay, so for those of you that don't know, resto modding is basically when you take a classic car and you make it modern. And I think that's what he means. Let me double check. I'm really bad with definitions. A resto mod job is defined as a vehicle that has been put back together with the addition of new, modern, or aftermarket parts that were not on the vehicle when it came from the factory. I guess technically that makes my car kind of resto modded, but not by much because instead of a 1970 engine, it's got a 1980 engine and you know, pretty much everything else is about the same. As far as the downsides of having a car like mine, uh, it is very much a gas guzzler. I'm sure you guys have all heard the joke before. Uh, I practically live at the gas station. It also gets a lot of, a lot of tension. Uh, not all of it is good. You know, you want to make sure you're really careful driving by cops with a car as loud as mine. And I think the downside, one of the other downsides, is you're constantly cleaning it because, you know, a paint job like that, you want to keep it nice. If you don't keep it nice, uh, people start mocking you and that kind of stuff. And probably the most annoying downside of all has to be... <laughs> See, my car is my daily driver, right? And that means I take it everywhere. But when it comes to parking, I literally have to park as far as humanly possible. And, you know, if I can, I try to take up two spaces to make sure there's no door dings. And yes, I know that sounds like a jerk move, but I feel like if there's an empty parking lot, then you should be able to do that if you want. Because I put a lot of work in restoring my own car. And uh, I feel like if you guys see a nice car that's taking up two spaces and it's not hurting anyone, don't key it. You know, that's probably the meanest thing you can do because they're obviously trying to keep that car safe and you're going out of your way to key someone's car that is obviously very special to them. In fact, don't key cars at all. Don't do that. I understand what's more irritating when it's a packed parking lot and some jerk takes up two spaces, but if it's an empty parking lot, just don't worry about it. Come on, it's not it's not hurting anyone. Another downside. Uh, the last downside is everyone thinks you want to race them. I can't tell you how many uh, light to light battles have been challenged to me just when I'm going to work or when I'm going to hang out with friends or something like that. Uh, however, the benefits definitely outweigh the downsides. Uh, it's one, it's really fun to drive. You see, you guys can't see it because you guys are like usually taped to the windshield, but the whole car rumbles and it feels like, even though it's not a very powerful car, it feels like it has a lot of power, which is a lot of fun to use. Uh, it also gets a lot of fun attention from everyone. Like, I remember a while back, a kid started pointing at me on the street and his mom kept dragging him along. And you know, it's the little things where the kids like start yelling that you got a real Hot Wheel, and that's what really makes it really special. On top of that, it's just fun to drive. You have old people saying, oh, I remember when someone drove that car, or... It's just, it's a fun car to drive. Plus, you can do burnouts just about everywhere, which is always a lot of fun. Make sure you don't do it on public roads. Or if you do, don't get caught. Question two. Oh, this is from my mom. Thank you, mom, but you know what? I don't have many questions, so I don't have a choice but to answer my mama's question, which she very easily could have asked me in person. What was your first memory of a favorite Hot Wheel? What about a favorite Hot Wheel track to play it on? Why? Okay, so, uh, first memory of a favorite Hot Wheel, I had to be, it was a little orange. Now, my current, my, my regular favorite Hot Wheel is always gonna be the Dior 2. My first favorite Hot Wheel was this little orange Ford F-150, and it had uh, flames on the side. And it was called, I called it Flame Truck. You know, I took Flame Truck everywhere with me. I took it to uh, any time we went to store. That was like, three or four, or something like that. Uh, favorite Hot Wheels track to play it on? Uh, okay, so I have a bad habit of all my favorite Hot Wheels cars not working on my favorite track, like the Dior 2. It can't do loops, 
and stuff like that. So uh, I think I'll just split into what was my favorite Hot Wheels track. Uh, my favorite Hot Wheels track had to be Cyborg. Cyborg or Slime Kano. Those were the two biggest ones that were out when I was a kid. Because Cyborg had this giant, you know, actually, hang on. I still got part of it. I still got part of it. It's right here. But uh, yeah, basically the cars would go in through the mouth and they just go racing around. I don't know. Where's the rest of the track? I don't know. This thing's just been out for years. So uh, yeah, first favorite Hot Wheel was Flame Truck. S first favorite track was Cyborg. And if you never had Cyborg or Slime Kino growing up, I am so sorry. Those tracks were sick. All right, Small Wood Boy. <laughs> His name is Small Wood Boy. What is your favorite food? What is your favorite movie? Okay, so favorite mood, favorite food. It's really, really hard for me to um to pick. Uh, on one hand is my mom's stuffing from Thanksgiving. That's one of my favorites. The other hand is the lasagna from Macaroni Grill. If you've never gone to Macaroni Grill, uh, what are you doing? I don't know if it's just a California Central Valley thing, but uh, oh man, what else? I also love macaroni and cheese. I won't say no to McDonald's Big Mac. I think I just like food in general. Uh, if I had to pick a category, I'd definitely skew towards American food with uh, Mexican food falling close behind. But to me, nothing beats a good burger. What's your favorite movie? Now, I know uh, a few people are expecting me to say Accelerators or any of the Hot Wheels movies, but uh, that's not true at all. No, my favorite movie has to be Interstellar because it's the only movie that's almost made me cry. Besides Coco, my, my girlfriend can attest to the fact that I started bawling during Coco. But yeah, Interstellar is just, it's such a masterpiece, especially when you look in like the filmmaking aspect of it. The black hole, they had to create that from scratch. They used an entire like physics-based engine or something like that. The cinematography is amazing. The, uh, the score is amazing. I listen to the score when I write scripts for videos. That's how much the movies affected me. And oh my gosh, that letter scene just, it just kills me every single time I see it. It's a great movie. And one of these days, I'm going to convince my girlfriend to watch that three hour movie with me because it's amazing. Just you wait, Christina. What are your plans for 2020 apart from Acceleracers and stuff? Oh, well, why did I read that weird? <laughs> what are your plans for 2020 apart from Acceleracers? All right, so uh, obviously I am planning to do some more Acceleracers videos, but apart from that, uh, most of my plans for 2020 is to also get noticed by the regular car community on YouTube. I and mean, not just Accelerators, don't get me wrong, I love you guys so much. You guys put me where I am today. But uh, I also want to get, you know, a wider array of people. And you know, the, I have the, and you know, I have the uh, the Hot Rider series, which I really want to take off. And you know, every time someone watches it, they always say they really enjoy it. So fingers crossed. Uh, I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more videos with my car. Uh, I'm going to be working with some friends to try to make some cinematics, not just to cars, but love like stuff in general. I wanted to make a The Last of Us short, but that didn't work out over the break. So it kind of works out that The Last of Us got pushed back because I have, I have a perfect setting. I have a little story in my head, that kind of thing. I also want to do the street race movie, but you know, it's impossible to uh, film in the winter because every time you clean your car, it starts raining on your parade. And it's horrible because wax is expensive. It's a pain in the butt. But yeah, no, no, no. Mostly I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, but I'm also uh, going to improve the production quality. I might start some new series if I want to, and definitely more stuff in my car. I want to get a dynode. I'm rebuilding a rear differential for it right now. Uh, and by the way, there's some Hot Rodders videos coming up on that. Just you wait. Uh, but yeah, just keep doing that kind of stuff. This next one is from this guy called Rice Car Garage. He's a friend of mine. Uh, he's also known as this man with a million eclipses because they're either not working. He, <laughs> he says, can you give me a shout out? Here's a shout out. Here you go, Rice Car. I hope you enjoy it. Let's start making some more videos. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have a lot of videos, but from what I've seen, I have enjoyed. Uh, if you're, if you like uh, just regular cars, not accelerations, then you'll probably enjoy his channel. I definitely give it a shot. So, you guys check him out. His name is Rice Car Garage. Should be right here. I don't know. I, I'm not very good at editing. What is your favorite realm from Acceleracers? Okay, this is, a, this is actually a pretty hard one. Um, 
my favorite realm from Acceleracers, I think it's got to be the Metro realm. You know, as a kid, I grew up with a lot of like the idea of like uh, street racing. None of my family street race. I just like to watch that kind of stuff on TV. Uh, I'd watch. Uh, I loved Hot Wheels. I loved City. I loved how cities looked like Hot Wheel tracks, especially those big freeways that turn. And the Metro realm just kind of brought that all together, along with some really good hip hop that I really enjoyed. Overall. It's got to be my favorite just because of how bizarre it is and how realistic you can make like a, and how realistic it is. I feel like if I had the budget, I would try to make like a Acceleracers recre a recreation of that zone just to, you know, just because. But of course, I don't have Acceleracers cars, so it'd have to be real cars. So yeah, I'm just shooting off from the mouth here. But yeah, favorite realm from Acceleracers is the Metro realm because the music, the way it looks, and how it's kind of a maze. Alright, Aaron Tenna asks, are you planning on recording video games? And if so, would you consider a game called Revhead? It's a poor man's Forza Horizon and it's pretty good. You can work on your cars like a car mechanic simulator and prepare your car for all sorts of racing, off-road, drag racing, oval racing, etc. It's a really neat game and I think it deserves more attention. Uh, I've never planned to do video games, mostly because I don't know how to record it. Uh, <laughs> that said, um... You know, it's never been against my ideas either. Maybe I'll make a, a gaming video in the future. You know, see how it does. See how it does. Obviously, I'm gonna be sticking to car-based games. Uh, probably Distance, uh, Forza Horizons, Forza Motorsport. Uh, maybe Need for Speed Heat if I ever finally get it, like my friends have been telling me to. And you know, I probably will check out Revhead. Definitely sounds interesting. Uh, and you know that, uh, in my opinion, drag racing doesn't get enough attention in a lot of modern racing games. It's always street racing or oval racing or that kind of stuff. No one appreciates just going zero to 60 in like one second. It's, it's, it's a good sport to watch, guys. So yeah, uh, I don't currently have plans on recording video games, but I'd be very much open to the idea. Because I, I okay, story time. I used to record video games and I had this YouTube channel Litmus. It was bad. I recorded them when I was like, oh man, what was I, like 13 years old? Oh. It was not good. It was really cringy. I played Sleeping Dogs and also I didn't know how to edit back then. I was going through puberty so my voice was changing every 10 seconds. Hey Steve. Ow. Let me grow home. <laughs> that guy was just gone. <laughs> Hey, you, it's for you. I love jokes. But, uh, yeah, it was something to behold. It was not good. And obviously those channels are privatized. Obviously that channel is now privatized, so no one can mock me for that. Will you cover Hot Wheels Battle Force 5 in the Makes No Sense series? Also, what is your favorite Acceleracers realm and why? All right, so I already covered the Acceleracers realm. Uh, as far as Hot Wheels Battle Force 5, um, I have thought about it, but at the same time, I feel it's so difficult because, you know, at least Acceleracers had a root in reality, but uh, in Battle Force 5, you have cars that are turning into saw blades, uh, cars that are using their wheels to climb, as well as it being a long overarching series. So I'm not sure I will cover that one, I'm sorry, but it just seems like it'd be, you know, very overly difficult. But uh, a little spiel about it though, uh, that Zoom's bike thing, that's a real thing now. You know, this company, not the company, these students, what is it, like MIT or something like that, they made like a, they made a bike that's wheels open up just like the Zoom bike, and uh, it flies, which is actually, you know, it's pretty cool. And uh, so yeah, I'll try to link that if I can find the video, if not, then just know it exists. Gage Viper 36 said, if you can make any Hot Wheels become real, which one would it be? Now, normally I would probably say Dior 2. Oh man, I'm becoming a Hot Wheels YouTube channel. Now, I would say Dior 2, but that's already real, which I'm very happy about. Uh, <laughs> I think probably the coolest one to see in real life would have to be a uh, Vulture. You know, I always thought it'd be a really cool looking track car. It's all low to the ground. It's got really fat rear tires and the exhaust looks like it'd be amazing. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to Come around, check out my videos. Uh, I have Acceleracious content. I have actual car content. I have, you know, car fun fact content. I'd really appreciate if you guys checked out all the other stuff too. 
Uh, as for all you guys, thank you for helping me get this far. Uh, I appreciate it a lot. I hope you guys all have a great day. 